Minneapolis. All right, David, I want to start with you. Record percentage move yesterday. Uh, what does it say to you about this market? Where do you think we go near term and long term? Record record point move yesterday, right. you mean. And yeah, it, it, um, it, it was a great example as to why people could not be trying to trade in and out of this thing. Because you miss a day like yesterday, you potentially miss like a third of the recovery, right? I mean, it's just too important that people sit still, not overreact, and not try to trade out and come back later. I mean, 1,100 points in a day. Can you imagine someone who decided to go to cash right before that and thinks they're coming back in in a few days? This volatility is going to continue. There's no reason for the market to find any footing right now. Half of Wall Street's not even working. Um, We're going to get into January, and we're going to see if fundamentals can take back over from fear. Uh, Scott, your thoughts? I don't totally agree with that. I mean, I get the premise that you're right. You know, David's right. You can't pick the bottoms on Monday and then get the tops on Tuesday. That's true. Or Wednesday or whatever it was after the holiday. But look, the reality is there are things you can do, though, because he's right. You know, volatility is definitely back. Uh, The market psychology is definitely poor. And for us, as you know, Charles, we've been talking about this, you know, for the last few days and weeks, is that there's things like fixed income that are working. There's things like utilities that are working. Gold's working. So, To mitigate the volatility, I guess you don't necessarily have to trade in and out, but you can take off some of those positions that maybe are seeing bounces on days like yesterday and get into stuff that's actually working like gold, as I mentioned. What about cash, though, Scott? Yeah, absolutely. Cash is another place to do that because, Charles, as as mentioned, you know, the volatility is going to keep going here into the end of the year and likely into January as we get into earnings season. So stuff that gets thrown out with the baby, the bathtub and the bathwater, that's what you should have your cash for. Wait, to, to many comments. First, gold is seeing, what, a five-month high, but could potentially have a, a much bigger upswing. Usually that's the case when we see the markets plummet so much as we did on Monday. I'm hearing some people say that this is a sucker's rally, and that was yesterday, the fact that everybody bought in thinking that they could ride this high. And when I, I was on the New York Stock Exchange floor most of yesterday during the day, and I went up to traders and asked them, what do you think's the catalyst for all this? Is it the retail sales? Is it the fact that Jay Powell's position is 100% confirmed and not going anywhere. And most of them had no idea, no idea. And it was mostly just due to headlines and lower volatility and uh, lower volume. Well, that that, so- that sounds like this uh, no idea as the same answer they had as to why things were dropping 600 points a day previously. Exactly. I mean, the fact of the matter is that the, the up and down volatility, what we know is not answerable in a three day period of time. Precisely. Over three months, six months, we have the trade war. We have the Federal Reserve, and I would argue it's not about interest rates with the Federal Reserve. It's about the balance sheet and their continued insistence on extracting liquidity from the economy. If all of a sudden you get a Fed that starts to down talk their balance sheet reduction in 2019, it becomes a very fundamental reason for markets to rally. I don't agree at all about gold, by the way, being a place to go trade into during this. Gold does not have a reverse correlation with equity markets. Yeah. Historically, well, it has a non correlation uh, yes with well, equity markets. Well, you know, listen. Uh, right I mean, now, over the last two weeks, <laughs> over the last two weeks, it has gold two is months. sitting here look, down look at 40, forty percent over seven years. Gold is down forty percent over seven. Years. Well, the market's up, one, so there though, is a negative right? correlation. I mean, the, the idea, though, that you would sell, you know, for the average investor out there, not a professional trader, to kind of sell a, a core holding. Uh, and then, and then to buy gold and then somehow get out of it in the right time and get back in those core holdings. I think that's the quandary people are in. I know someone who sold yesterday Netflix at the open and then he, uh, came to my office and said, did I make a mistake, uh, at one o'clock? So people are grappling with what to do and making a lot of panicky moves here. Uh, you know, of course, White House ec- ec- economist Kevin Hassett, it, it, you know, he tried to soothe that all out. Uh, he mentioned that the Fed chair Powell's here to stay for good. Uh, and David, the markets did react to that. Uh, you know, that is one of the reasons the market rallied yesterday. There's no doubt about it. No one wants to see more instability. Certainly no one likes the, uh, the open war between the White House and the Federal Reserve. Although I think the White House, David, it makes good points about the, the, not only the rate hikes, but to your point also taking $50 billion a, a month of a combination out, uh, not knowing where it's going to go it could be a mistake. Yeah, I think I think we have to kind of separate why the market might have responded about Chairman Powell being on stronger footing and what Kevin Hassett said yesterday. 
from the actions of the Fed itself. In other words, I don't think the market is saying we approve of everything the Fed's doing. The market clearly would love for the Fed to go hyper dovish. We understand that. It doesn't make the market right about it. Ultimately, I think the market, though, does not want to believe that there's more sort of instability and more maybe, uh, shall we say, poor behavior or poor choices coming from the president. I mean, he didn't say this, and so I think he was falsely accused of it. But if the markets believe that President Trump was going down this path of trying to fire the Federal Reserve president, the Federal Reserve right. chairman, it would but not Scott, have been good. Scott, 